Justin. Senator DeLima will be arrested today, February 20, 2017, after five full months of House probe. Senator Leela DeLima will be taken into custody on Monday, February 20, 2017. Last Friday, Senator DeLima was charged before the Money Lupa trial court for violation of Republic Act 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 over her alleged involvement in the bilibid drug trade. She supposedly violated Section 5 of the Dangerous Drugs Act, which penalizes the sale, trading, administration, dispensation, delivery, distribution and transportation of illegal drugs. Suspects face 12 years to life imprisonment with fines ranging from P500,000 to P10 million. Delima was allegedly receiving drug money from high-profile inmates for their protection during her term as Justice Secretary. Her supposed partners in this crime had testified against her in the House probe after they became state witnesses. The charges filed against them were dropped because of this. Delima insists the claims against her are false that she will be the Duterte administration's first political prisoner. The senator has been expecting this arrest for a few weeks now, which she calls plain and political persecution. She believes that President Rodrigo Duterte has a personal vendetta against her because she's one of his most vocal critics. She attempted to lead a Senate probe into the allegations of state-sponsored extrajudicial killings during the administration's war on drugs alongside claims of the existence of the Devo Death Squad. Unfortunately her examination into the EJKs was disrupted when the Senate ousted her as Senate Chairman. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre has however claimed that that the arrest is not politically motivated and that she should not categorize herself as a political prisoner. It is wrong for Senator De Lima to refer to herself as a political prisoner. Drug cases do not involve one's political beliefs. It involves one's choice to be involved in illegal drugs, Aguirre argued. On Saturday, National Police Chief Ronald De La Rosa assured the Lima will be safe while detained inside Camp Crame. I promise her she will be very, very safe inside Camp Crame, De La Rosa said while attending the Philippine Military Academy, PMA, homecoming in Baguio City. For her part, De Lima has said that she didn't deserve this treatment. Are you following this story? Let us know your opinions over the case in the comments below. Invite you to watch the video. Justin, 14 college students were killed in a bus accident in Tanay Rizal. In an updated news report, 14 college students were reportedly dead after their field trip bus bumped into an electrical post. Tanay police reported that fatalities include four female students from the Best Link College of the Philippines in Quezon City. Erwin Gaskian of Tanay Police Station stated that the bus with the plate number TXS-325 that was traveling along City of Bukal allegedly lost its prey and bumped into a post. In another post, Carlos Inofer of the Tanay Town Government stated that the bus was traveling the downhill road when the driver lost control of the brakes and deliberately hit a roadside post to stop the bus. They could have been running too fast that when they hit the post. The impact was too strong the roof of the bus almost got detached, Inofer said. The injured people were then brought to the following hospitals. One was brought to Camp Mateo Capinpin, six were brought to Tanay General Hospita. One was brought to Tanay Community Hospital, seventeen were brought to Tanay Provincial Hospital and the thirteen others were brought to another hospital. A school official who chose to with his identity stated that the students who were bound for a camping activity as part of their NSTP or National Service Training Program. There were nine buses, all in all. The rest of the students were safe and were already at the resort, she told the inquirer. Invite you to watch the video. Kim Jong-nam, why would North Korea want him dead? Mystery still surrounds the sudden death of Kim Jong-nam. The eldest son of late North Korean dictator Kim Jong-il, in Kuala Lumpur airport last week. Police said Kim was assaulted from behind, and something may have been sprayed or held over his face, causing him to feel dizzy. He died in an ambulance on the way to hospital. South Korea has called the murder an act of terrorism and said it was carried out by the North Korean government. At least five North Koreans are currently under investigation by Malaysian police. But why would Pyongyang want to kill a member of its ruling dynasty? 
Analysts say it's hard to know with any uncertainty but differences with ally and neighbor China and the dynamics of sibling rivalry may have played a role. Rift with China? In 2001, Kim Jong-nam was caught trying to enter Japan on a forged passport, reportedly in an attempt to visit Tokyo Disneyland. This caused huge embarrassment for North Korea and ended any lingering chances Kim had of succeeding his father as leader. From around 2003, he lived in near exile in Macau, a Chinese-controlled territory near Hong Kong. Kim regularly visited China, and maintained close ties with Beijing, primarily through his uncle Jang Song Thiek, the second most powerful man in North Korea following Kim Jong-il's death in 2011. Jang Song Thiek was China's guy in Pyongyang, said Jeffrey Lewis, director of the U.S.-based East Asian on Proliferation program. He was the source of Kim Jong-nam's income and probably why the Chinese protected him. Zheng was dramatically purged and executed in 2013 on the order of Kim jong Union, robbing Kim Jong-nam of his strongest ally in Pyongyang and a major link to Beijing. If North Korea is confirmed as being behind Kim Jong-nam's death as well, it will greatly undermine China's confidence in Kim jong Union's regime, said Zhao Tong an associate at the Carnegie Tsinghua Center for Global Policy in Beijing. Kim Jong-nam long advocated for a pro-reform approach in North Korea and openly encouraged Pyongyang to follow China's example, said Zhao. China is North Korea's only real ally, but relations have become increasingly strained as Pyongyang has continued to aggressively pursue its nuclear program in the face of international sanctions supported by Beijing. When the North Koreans executed Zhang, it was nominally for his business dealings in China, said Lewis. North Korea is wiping out all the pro-Chinese regime elements, although this murder seems especially cruel. Such a move would be a dramatic miscalculation by Pyongyang, according to Zhao. If this murder is confirmed, as being ordered by Kim jong Union, that will deal a major blow to China's hopes about the North Korean leadership's ability to open up, he said. This could fundamentally change how Beijing, a long advocate of diplomatic talks between Pyongyang and its rivals, deals with North Korea and its nuclear program. A recent decision by China, citing UN sanctions, to halt all coal imports from North Korea, may be a sign of Beijing's displeasure with Kim Jong-nam's death, Zhao said. Succession Threat? Sidelined after his father left his mother for dancer Ko Yong Hui in the 1970s. Kim Jong-nam was at one point a potential rival to his youngest brother for the succession, a middle brother, Kim Jong-chil was passed over for unclear reasons. Nevertheless, Kim Jong-union's ascension progressed far more smoothly than many predicted, and he soon shored up his grip on power through a brutal campaign of crackdowns and executions. A South Korean think tank said in December that Kim had ordered the killing of 340 people since 2011. Kim Jong-nam lacked anything close to a power base in Pyongyang, according to Michael Madden, an expert on the country's leadership. Given his heritage, Kim Jong-nam was viewed by some elderly North Korean elites as a kind of grandson figure, he wrote last week. This affection and relationship could not necessarily form a basis of political support domestically, but it would have been helpful had Kim Jong-nam ever put himself forward as a political rival to his half-brother. However, it is unclear whether Kim Jong-nam ever desired to succeed his father, let alone his brother. In interviews with Yuji Gilmi, author of the 2012 book about him My Father, Kim Jong-il, and me, Kim criticized hereditary succession and called for economic and political reform in the country. Speaking to former UN Under Secretary General Elizabeth Wren in an interview for Finnish television, Kim Jong-nam's son Kim han Sol said his father was not really interested in politics. Any potential plot to challenge Kim Jong-union would have likely required support from China, something Zhao doubts would be have been forthcoming since 2011. It makes no sense for China to engage in political conspiracy against Kim Jong-union and risk the overall China-North Korea relationship, when the chance of Kim Jong-nam succeeding is so low, he said. Sibling Rivalry born while Kim Jong-nam was studying overseas, and brought up separately by a mother who saw her husband's first family as rivals to her own sons, Kim jong Union was never going to be close to his eldest brother. Indeed, according to the author Gomi, 
the two brothers never even met. This did not stop Kim Jong-nam openly criticizing his sibling, saying that Kim Jong-un was too weak to maintain control over the country and was a puppet for regime elders. Such criticism is unlikely to have gone down well in Pyongyang, which often reacts angrily to any perceived slight, particularly from overseas. Speaking to reporters last week, Golmi said Kim Jong-nam's comments were known within the country. A defector told me there was a rumor the oldest son of Kim Jong-il had said critical words about North Korea and could be a cause of reform, he said. That person mentioned the rumor gave him hope. South Korean lawmaker Lee Shiel-woo, citing a National Intelligence Service briefing, said that Pyongyang had been attempting to assassinate Kim Jong-nam for five years. A North Korean man jailed for spying in South Korea in 2012 reportedly said he had been ordered to kill Kim. Another lawmaker, Kim Byung-ki, said that Kim Jong-nam had written to his brother in 2012, asking him to spare his life and those of his family. According to the South China Morning Post, friends of Kim Jong-nam and Macau said he told them he felt he was living on borrowed time. Zhao said it was possible the timing of Kim's death, awkward for North Korea as it faces massive international condemnation for its nuclear activity, may have been a coincidence. Kim Jong-un himself may have agreed for the North Korean spy agency to track down his half-brother, but he may not have directly issued the order to kill him, especially at this moment, he said. The opportunity for the alleged assassins may simply have been too good to pass up. Thank you for viewing videos, my channel regularly posts new videos if you remember registered channels to receive the latest announcements please thanks.